What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Track Car Obsession. We're in the final stretch of getting this project done, getting the engine running and getting this car driving. So we've got a couple of firewall modifications to make and those are really the last modifications that we've got to do to get this swap done and then some final touch up pieces. So let's go ahead and get to it. Alright, so the first modification that we have to make to the firewall is to fit our new slave cylinder. The new slave cylinder that works with the, or I'm sorry, the master cylinder for the clutch. The new master cylinder is required in order to um, push enough fluid in the Camaro slave cylinder. Um, the Mazda one just doesn't have enough volume when you push the clutch in. So we have to go to a larger master cylinder and in order to fit this, um, the cylinder is actually slightly larger than the hole in the firewall from the factory for the Mazda master cylinder. So we're just going to take a Dremel and just kind of um, open that hole up just a little bit more to slide this in. Uh, it's down here next to the brake master cylinder and the booster. So it's going to be difficult to film. I'll see if I can get an angle in there, uh, but I'll probably just go ahead and um, and drill out the hole and then show you what I'm show you what I'm talking about once it's done and we can go ahead and get this fit as well as the pedals on the inside. All right, so I tried filming that whole setup with uh, with dremeling in here, but between needing a light and getting the dremel in there, it was just um, it was too tight. The camera kept getting in the way and it wouldn't have been a good shot anyway. So um, I started off with uh, like a little sanding disc, sandpaper on a wheel, you know, and um, and going around there and while it was taking off some material it just wasn't fast enough so if you're going to be doing this i ended up putting on a little stone and uh it was aggressive enough to take it out in just a a few seconds of of you know moving the dremel around in it anyway so this is the cylinder that we were trying to fit in the factory master cylinder hole there and so now it will actually uh slide right in and the um, the two holes for the bolts fit in the exact same spot as the factory piece. So now that we have this set up here, I'm going to have to modify the um, reservoir on the brake master cylinder because on a manual you usually have a barb here, and that's what runs to the top of the master cylinder to provide the fluid for the hydraulic clutch. So I'll once I get I have a baster coming in. I'm going to be pulling this out so then I can go ahead and bleed the whole brake system. But when I do that, get that dry, I'll put in like a little brass barb and then run a little hydraulic line over to the top of the slave cylinder. But um, before I even do that, we can go ahead and get that bolted in and get the clutch bolted in on the other side. Before we jump inside, we're going to go over to the other side of the firewall and do our last firewall modification. All right, so the last firewall mod that we need to make is right here on the right side of the car um, there's a like a dimple circle in here um, on the other side of this you have the HVAC system and everything um, but there's enough space for us to throw this custom grommet setup that allows us to run the battery cable from the starter all the way to the back of the car uh, where we're gonna have the battery mounted and then the only electronics that have to come from the um, the Camaro ECU or to and from the Camaro ECU which is in this little harness here and it will plug into another section of harness um, into this connector and that's going to give you uh, the connector for your new check engine light for the Camaro ECU it gives you um, the connections for your Camaro throttle pedal and um, and the OBD2 connector for uh, for the Camaro ECU. And so, in order to put this through, this kit comes with this um, custom 3D printed um, piece that basically uh, you just get a hole saw and cut this hole out and then you run this harness through here like this 
Let me see if I can zoom in. You run this through here and then this battery cable is gonna run through here. So this piece then bolts right here. It's hard to show you without the bolts, but basically what you end up with is this clean mounted piece to uh, the firewall where your battery cable runs from the starter and then runs along the firewall over to the starter and then we'll run straight back and you'll run it underneath the carpet to the back uh, trunk area where you have the battery and then this is going to run straight run under the dash and then connect to the other side of uh, of this harness piece that will just plug in right here and then it's got the other connectors on there so uh, the first thing I'm going to do right now is mark the center and punch that and then go ahead and use a hole saw to drill this out and uh, and then we'll go ahead and get this mounted all right really quick I just wanted to show you so after you have the main hole drilled go ahead and take out the drill bit in the middle of your hole saw and then use the hole saw part to get the rest of this insulation out of the way but you want to make sure that you have the drill bit off at that point because once you go through here uh, and go through this insulation then uh, you've got the HVAC system, the heater box and all that stuff. You do not want to drill through that. So uh, you'll just be able to cut off this insulation pretty easily with this and then you've got a hole to run your wires through. All right, so this is what the finished product looks like. Um, you've got the cable that runs over to the starter. I've still got to run that down and throw the end on that. Um, and then this wire or a bundle of wires and loom amounts to a, um, a part of the harness right actually this one right here that will uh, mount here in a little while um, but this comes through the middle like I showed and uh, and then the battery comes in through the side and then gets routed around at an angle down in through the firewall there but now we've got the battery cable and this harness running through so now we're gonna run finish running the battery cable all the way to the back into the trunk and then we'll hook these wires up inside run them under get our clutch pedal mounted our brake pedal and our new Camaro throttle pedal and get that all wired in all right well hopefully the audio and video and everything come out all right on this section here um, what we're doing I, I had to use a little action cam to get a good wide angle shot here so hopefully you guys can see it but the next thing that we need to do is install this billet um, throttle pedal adapter and so this bolts in place of the uh, of the factory RX-8 pedal and then the Camaro pedal bolts right to this so I'm gonna go ahead and install this and then we'll be able to put the Camaro pedal on all right so now that the adapters in place we can go ahead and mount the uh, the Camaro throttle pedal. All right, so now that the Camaro throttle pedal is installed, I can go ahead and connect it to our Camaro wiring harness. Now this is the custom wiring harness. This is the other end of that wiring harness that we fished through the firewall on the right side of the car. Like I said, it has the connector for the Camaro throttle pedal. It has the OBD2 for the Camaro ECU and then it's got connections for an LED that is included for a check engine light so that you know when the check engine light is being thrown um, on your LFX motor. Um, I'm not going to be using the, the LED that comes with the kit. I've actually modified the instrument cluster so that the factory check engine light from the Mazda no longer comes on and uh, a new LED is put in its place so that um, I'll have a normal check engine light on. I just find it, it'll, it'll look cleaner and I think it'll be easier to go through my local inspection than having to explain to them that 
the dash check engine light no longer is needed and that this other LED that's sticking out of the dash is the one that uh, is is my valid check engine light so um, and then like I said the OBD2 is on this as well um, so there's a a female port that's on here and that is for power so um, you have the CAN bus signals from the Camaro ECU and then the power is just taken straight from your um, RX-8 OBD2 port up here so this pops out the um, the new OBD2 port sits in its place and then the other one plugs into the back so uh, your OBD2 port is in the factory location and then um, this will just hook over into the, the throttle pedal right now and uh, I'll do that now and then actually uh, zip tie the wires up behind uh, this panel up here so it's all cleaned up and we'll get this factory throttle cable uh, connector out of the way as well. Next on the agenda is to go ahead and pop this factory OBD2 connector out. And so we're just going to plug in the Mazda OBD2 and click the new Camaro ECU OBD2 in here. So I'll get this zip tied up out of the way and that harness will all be cleaned up and then I'll connect uh, my wires from the instrument cluster down to these wires so that uh, we have an indication of when the check engine light is. Uh, next thing we're going to do is go ahead and um, install the clutch pedal assembly and this is the automatic transmission control module. Uh, when I first start this car up, I'm going to go ahead and leave this connected. That way I don't have to worry about there being any errors or anything like that and wondering if it has to do with my swap. And once we have it running, I'm going to unplug this and see if there's any ill effects because I'd like to get this box out of the way. Um, I may have to rewire some of the connectors so that it thinks it's in um, neutral or something like that so that uh, there's no issues. Um, turning the car on and rolling down the road and hopefully having ABS and all that stuff but we'll uh, we'll figure that out when we get to it so right now I'm just gonna get this out of the way hopefully it'll make it easier for me to be able to film all this stuff and you guys be able to actually see the installation of the clutch pedal um, I'm gonna go ahead and film it I may or not, may not post it uh, because there's really nothing special about this clutch pedal installation compared to a, a standard clutch pedal installation because um, the only difference is we'll, really on that slave cylinder that we did on the other side where we just had to make that hole a little bit bigger. Um, see if I can get that out of the way, but um, here's your hole right up here. Uh, it's just a little bit bigger and we've actually got the shaft for the uh, clutch master cylinder coming through. So. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the clutch pedal installed and then uh, I'll put my brake pedal back in. You don't have to take that out when you uh, you know do anything like this. I just had to swap it from an automatic brake pedal to a manual brake pedal and figured it'd be easier to film this with it out. I also wanna point out um, on the RX-8s, one of the weak points is the clutch pedal assemblies. They actually break because of this thin metal right here. So I've put eighth inch steel plating all around the inside and, uh, and welded it all up. And then I put a, a rust preventative coating on here so that um, it would not rust. And so I should have a solid clutch pedal and not have to worry about uh, this thing breaking because it, it usually will break um, even as early as like 40,000 miles on an RX-8. And that's with a factory style um, RX-8 clutch. And now we've got a larger master cylinder, a larger slave cylinder, a more aggressive clutch and everything. So uh, I definitely wanted to, to make sure that the clutch pedal was reinforced. All right, well, by the time I got into uh, bolting in the clutch and the brake, there was just not enough room for a light and for me and for the camera and everything, so I didn't record it, but uh, uh, they just bolt in obviously like your factory pieces. So those are all done. Now we can go ahead and uh, 
bolt the um, dead pedal back on the side panel here and then uh, the rocker panel cover uh, but I'm not going to film that so let's go ahead and go into the engine bay we're going to move on to the coolant system all right so the first part of the cooling system that we're going to take care of is the coolant reservoir and so this actually sits in the same location as the um, the RX-8 um, windshield washer fluid reservoir so you actually lose your windshield washer fluid um, washing capabilities uh, you know when you do this swap you could probably do you still got the line here you could probably do some like auxiliary container like a small universal one and still be able to use it I'll probably I'll probably end up doing that uh, but right now I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that we have this because obviously coolant to the engine is more important so in order to install this uh, the first part is actually this 3d printed uh, 3d printed bracket so it's gonna bolt right into the factory location alright so now that we got the bracket on uh, before we bolt this up this drains down into um, a modified tube that comes from the thermostat housing and runs to the front uh, lower radiator hose um, it's a lot easier to get to this before you have this bolted up all right so now that we've got that connected we can just go ahead and throw this up in place so now we've got this bolted on we're going to go ahead and install our radiator and a cooling fan set up and then we can run this across the front across the top of the radiator and then bolt it over uh, on the edge of the front water net so right now we'll just leave this rolled up over here all right so the next step is to go ahead and mount the radiator and the uh, radiator shroud and fans before you do that there's one modification that you need to do your factory uh, fan shroud has these support plastic supports all the way around each fan um, the way that this is moved and the engine is pushed forward you actually need to remove these bottom pieces for clearance so you're just going to cut them here and here on each one of these fans and then that gives you clearance at the bottom so this is one where that's already been done you can see um, this has been been um, cut so that when it's right up against there it's close but there's there's just enough there uh, that there there is interference so you just take that out on on both of the fans and you still have you know these supports all the way around it except for at the bottom so there's not an issue of um, you know there being any failures because of of that support being missing at the bottom so we're gonna go ahead and bolt this up to the radiator these are the new radiator mounts they actually bolt these pieces bolt right to the factory mounts and you'll see on the bottom here the factory mounts actually have um, different size grooves on the metal mounts and so these make it easy to know which one it just fits right in there and then this one is clearanced on the side and your factory rubber grommets for the radiator sit right in here so we'll go ahead and bolt these into the bottom and then these bolt to the top of the radiator and uh, this basically will give you an idea of how far the radiator is kind of moved forward at the bottom and then this is moved uh, moved up at the top so the radiator bolts to this and then this sits on the the factory mount where this radiator you know would have normally sat there so uh, you're just moving the radiator from this factory position up like this
All right, so to install the radiator, all you have to do is drop the bottom two posts in those um, modified mounts, and then those mount adapters at the top will bolt down in the factory places, so it's just two 10 millimeter nuts. Um, the factory AC line here, uh, it's kind of in the way. I didn't run into this on the race car because I had this removed, so I'll figure out a way for this to sit smoothly. Uh, but recommend go ahead and putting the lower radiator hip hose on before you mount the radiator and it's a, a lot easier to get to it. So we'll just mount that up now. Go ahead and throw the upper radiator hose on. Then we can start finishing up the wiring up here. Plug in the ECU. Um, and on this side we're going to go ahead and install our oil filter sandwich adapter, our oil filter, and then run new lines to the factory oil cooler uh, on the driver's side so that we can continue using the RX-8 oil cooler for this engine and I'll show you the pieces that I got to make that work. Alright, one other thing that I want to mention um, before we move on to the oil cooler is I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put this upper radiator hose on um, but this is just another um, you know, piece that is a part of the kit that just makes it super easy to install. Um, it just it saves time, you know, it's not something that's perfectly necessary or absolutely necessary, but you know, when you're able to just um, pull out a radiator hose, they've already got it labeled that this is the upper hose, the hose clamps are already on it, and it shows what side uh, goes towards the radiator. So all you have to do, since you're unfamiliar with it, you know, instead of sitting there and seeing what works best, um, you know, they show you right here. So you can just throw it on and not have to guess about it. All right, guys, well, I'm in the middle of editing, actually towards the end of editing this video, and I still had uh, several pieces of video to add on to this, like the oil cooler lines and all that stuff that I was just talking about in the previous clip. Uh, but it's already about a 20 minute video. If I add that stuff on, it's going to be at least another 5 to 10 minutes showing you all the pieces and then the installation of that. So I'm going to keep that for the next video. Go ahead and close this one off. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. I'm going to go ahead and get this uploaded and then get started on the next video for you and hopefully have that up in the next few days. And uh, if you cross your fingers, maybe we can get the thing started in this next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.